We now join this meeting, already in progress. The names and faces are intentionally obscured to protect the anonymity of Burke, C, Laurel, and Pete. Oh shit. Uh, we're here live. We got lots See, to say. Podcast, let's definitely criticize our viewers a lot. <laughs> I'll go great. I mean, I think an example of this would okay. be... Here's, here's side, what I want to say. On one side with, like, the Democrats yeah. would be their whole resist stuff. I think resist is pre term, but, you know... Um, Another example was the Bernie movement. Yeah. A lot of people called themselves Demo- started calling themselves democratic socialists, which really isn't, I think, as radical as a term as people think it is. I thought it always seemed kind of moderate to me. But then now democratic socialist is too radical, and the news fad is to for people to walk back more and um, call themselves social democrats. Well. I mean, li- labels are c- utterly irrelevant. Hey, you! Psst, what you trying to start? <laughs> <laughs> you can call me now. Oh, we should. We should I'm talking to Pete, but not yeah, He's trying to pose, man. No, Curtis, Curtis like, got a lot to say, but then he got to start posing. No, well, see, the, 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 uh, labels are so meaningless because you could call. For, let's, say I was in a, let's say I was stopped by a racist cop. Mm-hmm. Not all cops are racist, but let's say I was. Stop by a racist cop. It doesn't matter if 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 he's racist towards African Americans or racist towards blacks. Mm-hmm. All right, his action is going to be the same. You can be, he he, he can call me a Smurf. It's not going to matter. I mean, the only difference is uh, instead of being damn, blue, you're one dark Smurf. Instead of being blue, blue and tiny, I would just be black and tiny. So like, black and tiny. Here's, here's, that would be my name, Tiny Smurf. <laughs> Okay. No, but Burke, who's a, who's a Brit up and comer, you just said uh, that you think people in the movement have regressed. Mm-hmm. Okay, and and you said you think they sort of got caught up in the moment and 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 learn all these things and, and they sort of lost that. Yeah. Okay. And and I said I agree with your your assessment of sort of what happened, but not why it happened. And what I was going to say was. To me, it's more it's more like we're all sitting here, right? Mm-hmm. And then someone bursts through your door in a <laughs> m- mild panic and just runs through, breaks through the gas and, and just, just runs, right? Frothing at the mouth. <laughs> Do we just sit here and go, well, that's interesting. And we go, mm, mm, could you pass a tea? No. We all <laughs> get up and go, what the hell? And we run out the door, Okay. <laughs> Now, out of all of us, only one person knows what the hell is going on. The four of us react to that going, he must know something, better follow. That's what happened. These people never regress. I mean, these are numbers. And so now it's settling back down and put to the side. Except that's the problem is like we can't. And we don't, but we don't need them. We need to educate okay. them, but we don't need them yeah, to push forward. Yeah, I mean, we don't. The thing is we can't, like, we need to have a mass movement, like, we, that reaches beyond just the people who are in this some leftist wing to kind of like to educate yeah. other people. We have to get uh, new people into the movement. Like it can't it can't just be a small group of the most dedicated people because we won't really gain more of that. I think. Well, I mean, we don't really need like a super mass. We need what is what is the what is it called? Um, the not the break the tipping point right. the tipping point when you need uh what is it 20 not 20 percent uh well a lot of people say like a revolution we only need about 3.5 percent of the population yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it's it's i forget the percentage but it's it's been documented scientifically and everything else i don't i don't i think some people say that but i don't think that's the there, there was a study like people this. really actively engaged, like yeah. really into risk things and to be really involved. Because it's something like three point five percent. Everybody is is, is neutral, mm-hmm. or you know they might have their opinions, but they're not activated, right? Right. And so the three point five percent isn't just three point five percent. It's it's three point five percent of people active, and the rest go, okay. oh, listen to what this person is saying. Yeah. You might call it the Jesus effect, right? Mm-hmm. right? It's the tipping point where the people who are doing nothing are listening to the few who do, and that few starts activating others. Mm-hmm. And so you don't really need a mass movement. You just need 
the people who are so separated in knowledge and activated to get together. Mm -hmm. And what are we doing online? What are we doing in a movement? Not getting together. We're just live streaming this stuff. That's all we're doing. We're just going to sit on Facebook and live stream everything. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> um, I mean, all right. I, okay, just moving on. I think moving another... Um, Elise is watching us. Hi, Elise. Hi. Hi, Elise. Do I know Elise? No, Michelle and my sister Emily and Lori watched, but I think they only watched for like three seconds. They're not watching anymore. (laughs) They're like, ah, it's a bunch of drunk people in Pete's dining room. Okay. Captivating entertainment. I mean, I think another problem with the Bernie movement is that a lot of people in it kind of don't get that the left has existed and continues to exist outside of Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Like, and there's the champagne being poured right there. They're called Democrats. Stop <laughs> upstaging C with your champagne pouring and your side comments. Wait, stop upstaging oh, C. Oh, I meant C. Stop upstaging Burke. Champagne Burke is speaking right now. Burke um, has the floor. Tap, tap, tap. Um, I mean, no, but tap, the, Democrats, tap, tap. the Democrats aren't the left. Like, I mean, like the Green Party and the IWW and all kinds of different... PSL, Communist yeah, USA. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, uh, the Communist uh, Party USA are... Hi, Elise. Democrats ...in a lot of ways. It's weird, um, but... Um, <coughs> like, a lot of Bernie Sanders people view themselves as the only legitimate expression of leftism and view that themselves like they view that this whole movement started with Bernie Sanders and they just kind of assume that everybody else started the same way as them and no one else was here before Bernie Sanders and so therefore our movement has to be continued to continue to be focused around a cult of personality around Bernie Sanders um but I mean, at the same time, a lot of people on the left who are there before Bernie Sanders or separate from Bernie Sanders kind of dismiss Bernie Sanders supporters as either not being radical enough or only jumping on a bandwagon. And uh, even though if they actually talk to each other, they'd find they agree on a lot. And it's not really a good mindset to have to build a mass movement. Right. I mean, but I, I think I think the Bernie people mm-hmm. are sort of fringe mm-hmm. um, right now. Uh, I mean, what, what I mean, like I'm a Bernie person. I voted for Bernie. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know what I mean. I supported Bernie. I voted for Jill Stein. Mm-hmm. Love Bernie. Think Bernie. You know, oh Bernie. Okay. You know, Park. So I'm not fringe in terms of, like <laughs> we mentioned some people who were just you know every day they're posting about I love you, Bernie. You know. It, it, I don't know if that's really representative. I think there's a lot of people who still love Bernie like I do, still mm-hmm. respect Bernie like I do. But then you got these other people who are like, F Bernie, Bernie's sold out. Da, da, da. I think I think that's a little bit fringe. Mm-hmm. And I think people who are like, oh, I love Bernie and all this stuff, uh, I think that's fringe. I think people just like me, I, I think like us, we, we, we supported Bernie, we like Bernie, but we're not like... You know, he were worshiping him right now. Yeah, we moved on, realizing where he is, and we're trying to move other things forward. In the, yeah, in the well, business. I just want to say, um, I mean, I'm kind of going to take it in the middle between the two stances of either Bernie is the best or Bernie is a traitor. Bernie, your boss. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say, you know, I was I was radicalized by Bernie. I felt all, I thought all the things I did before Bernie. Just to say, but, um, I mean, like, so I like, because, you know, he's just a cool guy from Vermont who's done some good things and some bad things, like, and he's done more good things than most people do, but still, everybody does some bad things, Mm -hmm. and what happens is people don't want to look to each other and see and Mm -hmm. go through the complicated task of actually organizing people to see how we can change the politician as a savior. So they create in size like Bernie Sanders. And then when those, um, 
and they just develop kind of cults of personality around them. And when those heroes they make turn out to be similar to other politicians in certain ways, they view that as a betrayal when really it's just politicians being politicians. But we're lucky with Bernie. Bernie was actually a failing lamer and lamer. Like now some yeah. people say that Al Franken is the way of... Thinking. Oh, Lord. Uh, but, but, but yeah, people just... I mean, people like movies. So they, they, they see Al Franken yapping uh, against some, you know, Yahoo Trump appointee, whatever. Um, and they go, look, that's interesting intermission. You know, they just like TV and they react to TV. The, the issue that I have with... with, with with people who are calling Bernie a traitor, it's not because they're not Bernie, he were worshiping him. Mm-hmm. It's because Bernie's not a traitor. Because they, he, well, they don't understand how Washington works, really. But, I mean, it's, not, it's, but um, it's not even that. They're just, they're just I mean, they're, they're basic. I mean, they're, they're basic bitches because, you know what's a traitor? If I say, look, you know, Pete, I'm gonna bring over, I'm gonna bring over some rare 100 year old <laughs> liquor. Right? Two can afford finer taste with new, barefoot bubbly. Don't forget the new pineapple. The new pineapple. New flavor. There we are. Twelve ninety nine. I don't know how much it costs. So, but uh, that's a traitor. I mean, it's a horrible. Uh, it's a horrible. Zoom in on it. It's there a we horrible go. metaphor. It was but on sale at Giant. If I say I'm going to do something and I bring in something else, you could say in the in the in the barest sense I'm a traitor. I mean, that's a horrible analogy. But I, I, I said I was going to do something, and I didn't. I brought something else. Now, everything that Bernie has done, he said always. So that's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. He's not a traitor. He said, I will always uh, vote for the Democratic nominee. By the way, we're talking about Bernie, which earlier in the evening we said we were going to try not to do. But Actually, here we are again. We said when we have a podcast, we're not Absolutely. Going to this, we're not doing a Okay, so this doesn't qualify as a podcast. Absolutely. This is another really cheapo throwaway Facebook live stream. Yeah, absolutely. No one's going to watch this. <laughs> so I'll be talking that, to that's my- No, Holly Mitchell Engelman wa- was watching. June was watching. Elise was watching. They're, they were all watching for about 10 seconds. and then the, <laughs> yes. Who's watching that? Somebody I, was lo- watching for three seconds. And then just when I said that, they quit. And now it says zero. Yeah, yeah see, people were watching, but they stopped. Maybe that says something about us. Um, we're overwhelming. No, but uh, uh, but but again, like Bernie has always said, cer- he said certain things. It's not about me. It's about us. Um, I, will, I will vote for the Democratic nominee. And I hope it's me. If it's not, I'm voting for whoever it's going to be. I mean, he's always been cons- – whether you agree with Bernie or not is your choice. But to say he's a traitor means he said one thing and said another. Yeah. There was no evidence of that. He never said one thing and did the other. He may not have done what people wanted him to do, run for third party. He never said he was going to run for third party. He joined the Democrats day one. Right. So there is – it's it's an incomprehensible uh, understanding of the word traitor. So I just hate these activists running around yapping because they're not speaking in truth. Right. You can be disappointed. You can be angry. You can say, I want him to it's do this. It's their anger that. is like distorting it's everything. Not, it's not yeah. based in reality. Right. Bernie is doing what he's always said. Disagree with him. That's not worship. That's not hero worship. You're more than welcome to disagree with them. So stop it's like everybody is not. trying to... And like it's, axe grind on their own particular anger point, yeah, and that's it's, like it's, yeah. we know Hillary supporters. Yeah. Oh, Laurel! The Laurel finally Laurel. gets to say something. The lovely Laurel Bosma. All right, can you all handle yourselves for a minute? Yes, sir. Okay, that's good. I mean, I Laura's kind of Laura's awesome. She has a lot to say. All these men talking over her and consuming all the oxygen. Man, explain. Build up. No, I forget. Um, yeah, Hillary supporters will tell you that Bernie's not a real Democrat and that he's a traitor in that way yeah. because he just did it to run for president. <laughs> so, yet he got bored and done with this yeah. conversation. <laughs> yeah, but he never said, yeah. But he, all right. Let's talk about issues instead of candidates. How about that? Well, we weren't talking about we weren't having a Bernie, so we were following up on something Bernie said, which is a tributary of the conversation. But tributary. Said, oh, I'm going to start talking about tributaries. Please, yeah. please don't. That 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 is electrifying. Um, 
No, you said you wanted to park something earlier. Do you remember what it was? Yeah, you were saying that Bernie knows, um, is brilliant and knows what he's doing. So oh, this gets that. to the... Yeah, you did. Okay. I agree with it, but I, I didn't remember. There's something about, like, Bernie's very intelligent and he knows what he's doing. Yeah. So to get to that point, let's follow up on what a lot of people are talking about in the sure. Bernie-verse. Bernie-verse. Let's obsess yeah. about Bernie. And you just told us to get off uh, of Bernie. That Nick Branagh is doing this. It's actually very successful. They have a lot of on-the-ground organizers doing the draft for Bernie campaign. Yeah. So do you think that's what you meant by when you said Bernie knows what he's doing, that he's yeah he's willing to be drafted at a certain well, point if the Democrats don't get to a certain point with themselves. Yeah. I was, take anybody. Take me. Take any person. To- Malachi, Kelly, Kelly Swick Robinson. Oh, yeah. yeah no from more, Frostburg, no Virginia. Virginia. Malachi from Prince George's County. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hello. This is courtesy, yo. Yo, how you doing? Don't know why I'm talking like this. <laughs> okay. So, uh, well, when, when you when you listen to me or anyone anyone you follow, listen to I mean just anybody pretty much online. I don't care how how many people they have, how many followers they have, or whatever. You want some more? No. Right. You're talking, yo. Oh. So <laughs> uh, and what typically happens is you you get a lot of ranting, a lot of opinions, blah 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 blah. When you listen to Bernie, again, whether you agree with him or not, he's very specific in what he says. He's very clear, very to the point, very direct, and and no 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 bullshit. So that's what I'm talking about. When he when he says, "Look, I want to work within the Democratic Party. I want to blah 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 blah," he means it. Now, does it mean he will never consider other options? No, because he's not. Well, because well, he's not. A, he, he's not. He's not acting like a, a typical politician. I've said this, and I'm going to just stick to this because I'm trying to get points with the lobby, whatever. If situations change, which warrants him doing some kind of progressive third party, whatever, for the betterment of the movement, for the betterment of the world, he's going to do it. Mm-hmm. Um, right now, he's saying. That's not third party. That's not draft Bernie. That's not these things. So, uh, my only my only issue with that is, you can build a movement for a person, but you can't expect the person to just automatically walk into it. Mm-hmm. But again, like I said, they could be building it. You know what's that movie? Uh, build it and they will come. Mm-hmm. Okay, Fields of Dreams. Thank you, <laughs> Burke, with a. Jeopardy question answered. So, uh, how do you even know? So that? I get, I get that, but uh, they're building, they're building it. In my mind, they're not building it so he can come. Hmm. I know that's in their mind. I think it's good that they exist for one simple reason only: that they build it in case he decides later to come. Completely different, though. I don't think by building it he will come. Okay, so there's like a time frame discussion. Like it's okay. not a time frame. I think it's I think it's great to have that in case he needs it. Mm-hmm. But right now he doesn't need it. I think he's working with them. As so you're said, so you're pretty much down with Nick Branagh that you agree that that he could come at some point and that this is sort of like rolling no. out a red carpet, a welcome mat. Uh, no, if uh, I mean, if if I have the same capabilities as Nick and 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 and, and his organization and everything else, I would not have I would not have done it. Mm-hmm. I I don't believe Bernie will be there. I think Bernie Bernie's agendas, Bernie's own words, Bernie's everything else. He set a different path. But my belief does not predispose someone else going. Let's build this just in case he does come again. I don't think that's their belief. I think. Their belief is we will build it and he will come. I don't think that's going to happen. But for someone else to, again, build it in case he does come, and in case he does need to come, in case something changes later, then it'll be there. I love that. But I think um, right now the, the current political spectrum and, and what Bernie's agenda is, is to work within the Democratic Party. All right. He's okay. basically He's not here in 2020. And it's not, I mean, Bernie Sanders isn't going to run in 2020. Well, yeah. Because, and I mean, I know this, like, we've had um, 
I mean, Nelson Mandela was pretty old, but just like, we're not going to have a 78 year old running for office, most likely. That, although, I mean, if the DNC, I mean, like, like kind agree. of crashing before, they can do it again. I think. Right. And once you've lost your in presidential politics, you're really deemed a loser from there on out. Yes. And I mean, I think, well, true, but I mean, what's, or what's going to happen most likely is people were like, you know, it's at first, it really seemed like Trump was going to bring about the rise of fascism in America. But what's going to happen is basically Trump's going to stay around. It's going to be mediocre. There'll be, um, can I, um, thanks, um, Trump's gonna stay around, it's going to be mediocre, we're going to have some racist, uh, undertones, but it's mainly just gonna be typical, um, neoconservative stuff, and then Trump's gonna get impeached in probably within the next year and a half, and then Mike Pence will be president, and act in the momentum we've seen of people wanting to get involved in politics, will start to disappear because people will be like, oh, Pence is in office. It's okay now. No, a lot of people really hate Pence. I mean, a lot of people I couldn't go into that. But but the general American public, he won't garner the same opposition. What's going to happen is in 2020, um, the Democratic Party is most likely going to nominate some mildly progressive candidate as a false cons- concession to the Bernie supporters, and people will be like, oh, see, now, and, and that, that candidate is most likely going to win, and people are going to be like, oh, now, see, everything works, the whole electoral system is reliable, and there are no deeper, all the, no di- deeper systemic problems that need to be addressed, um, and that whole activist momentum is going to dis- is going to get even smaller. We're going to see far less opposition um, to the bad things that are still happening, and then the climate is going to continue getting worse and worse. And at some point, that's going to have to force some real change. But well, that's a parking lot yet. and parking lot question. Next. So that's my prediction for the next twelve years. Back to oh predictions, <laughs> Laura. Y'all well, have said too much. We're going to get yeah, back Laurel, to Laurel here. Ladies no, first. I want to hear you guys bloviate. No, I, I you don't want to hear a bloviate. Lot, but, uh, we want to hear what the lovely Laurel Bosnos has to say. Yes. Bosma. It's, it, it's in her Bosma. Contract. You always have to say <laughs> lovely before her name. <laughs> the lo- lovely Laurel Bosma. Absolutely. I would like to start talking about what we're going to do next. Or as I pronounce it, Bosma. Next steps. <laughs> Next steps. What do we do? What are concrete next steps? Because a lot of people are in the Green Party, and then some people don't feel like they've been completely welcomed. That's what I think people say. Depends on where you are. I kind of think that's bullshit, actually, because I used to attend Green Party meetings, and we were never, like, looking, giving the ugly stare at people and be like, get the fuck out. So I don't know why people are saying they're not welcome, but I don't is, buy that, really. There is some skepticism about burners. Well. But no. maybe not everyone. I, I imagine that Green Party meetings are different everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah. that is the path forward. It's that, yeah. and that's the problem. The problem. I is, think it's a lot of burners just wanting to be Bernie, have their whole Bernie culture, and so they're like, if the Green Party is not willing to like make Bernie their demigod, then like fuck the Greens, you know. So I, as a Green, I, I kind of that's, resent that bullshit. That's, that's not. I don't think that's the case for everyone who feels that way. Yeah. I think there probably are people who are ready to move on from mm-hmm. Bernie. But because they weren't in the Green Party for a long time before Bernie, no matter where they're at now, no matter how much they like Jill Stein, yeah, um, I feel like they align more with her actually than maybe Bernie. Mm-hmm. The, the 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 killer problem there is not 
the, the universal problem connecting all of these issues is perception. That's whether whether or not that's true that that the Green Party is excluding Bernie people or whatever. I'm just saying it, some people. I, I think I know. I'm not. I'm not even. Some yeah. people feel that way, and I'm not saying I feel. That I know. Way. I'm saying I'm concerned that people feel that way because mm-hmm. I'm trying and to that's help the, Green the problem. Party. I mean, mm-hmm. and, and yes. that's the problem. That's the problem with everything is perception. Mm-hmm. We we're 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 not we're not yeah. going to get anywhere. Because you got so many people with different perceptions of where the movement is. So when we ask, before we can ask, you know, where's the movement going? We're but not even on the same page. Uh, like, um, C is a hardcore vegan, and I fed him honey earlier today. <laughs> so I'm a sincere sinner, and I'm going to hell. <laughs> well, we'll resume with our regularly scheduled programming now. He is. In, in, in any case, of. <laughs> You know, it's, everything is. It, it, let me just finish. My Honey, sentence. the gateway to hell. You're gonna finish and, your sentence. Yes, everything, er, everything, everything is perception. So you ask, where is the movement going? Well, nowhere. What do you want to because say? nowhere until. No, Why is she waving around the pineapple? Nowhere until the pineapple champagne bottle. <laughs> it's a microphone. Can you believe this, people out there? It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Pineapple <laughs> champagne. There you are. Will you let me? Will you let me? Okay, no. say it. Please. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but, again, the movement can go nowhere until we even agree where the movement is. And there is no agreement where the movement is. I know who to There's invite. There's people with different impressions all over the place. You know, is the Green Party doing this? Is the, yeah. No one knows. No one, no one agrees. And, and there is no desire to find consensus. Um, there's only desire. Well, I invited to, Chelsea already. There's Chelsea only didn't desire come. to to form factions to fight with everyone else who not only possibly disagrees with you, but has no idea what you believe because their perception of that faction is different from the faction's own perception. Like take, the people summit. Well, yeah. I mean, take take what Burke said about the, the, the rise of fascism, for example. Now, we see all this activity because Trump is now president, but is it really a rise? Right? I mean, so the... the I mean, yeah, I mean, the, there's a rise in noticing fascism, but... When I meet these people, I have not met one of them who's like one years old or two years old or three years old. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. These are adults. So these were not overnight fascists. These are people who are now propelled to reveal their fascism. These are the same black people are getting dressed to go shopping because they don't want to be excluded. And, and, and marginalized when they're shopping. This, everybody's doing the same things, but now it's outward. It's out in the open, which is why so many people didn't want to vote for Hillary because the fascism, now I'm not saying she's a fascist, but what she does. Wow, well, some of her policies definitely lean exactly, toward. Exactly. But, but the point is, it's not, it's not that it's what she does, which is hidden, but it still goes on. Trump is doing things that are not hidden. The same crazy batshit thing. So these 20-year-old and 30-year-old and 40 and 56-year-old fascists have always been doing this under the, the hidden glow of these sort of neoliberal policies and these conservative policies, policies and everything else. So it's not a rise of fascism. It's perception of the rise mm. that's now exposed. So the issue is we've got to really put a spotlight on our perceptions and realize the person you agree with and disagree with does not have a perception of everything else around you. Yeah. We need to we need to bridge that divide and go, here's where we are. And then once we get to that point, we can go, here's where we need to go. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I'll end with three more seconds. I think it was Bloomberg <laughs> who said um, a couple of days ago, I mentioned this to Pete earlier, he said something along the lines of, Trump's going to win in 2020 because the left is going to be divisive and, and destroy itself, eat itself up. Um, I don't remember. I don't. I don't agree with him. It's but a, anyway. With his exact words, but his point is that Trump ain't making it to twenty twenty. But another discussion. No, that's another discussion. What's but, your disca- d- definition of left, though? Well, they're, they're, yeah, that's 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 vacuous. Like I wouldn't consider the Democrats to the left really. I mean, well, they're fake left. I mean, and so so many it goes to perception. They, they pretend to be left, and so so many people consider them left. They become an authoritative voice 
for the left, even though mm, we don't Yes and no, but a lot of times they don't even want to be called left. Uh, yes, the, exactly. A lot of them want to be called centrists and that they, the, then they term the Republicans as the, re, right. the, re, the real right. radical reactionaries. And, and they do that as a political uh, <laughs> chess piece to, you know, lobbies and, and you know, power plays. I mean, like people like Cory Booker just irritate the hell out of me. Yeah, why? Like, why, does Corey, why does Cory? Why does Cory Booker bother I'm a you? Black vegan. I'm progressive. Da, da, and then you know. Oh, I didn't know he's vegan. Is he? Yeah, he's vegan. And then he goes around eating uh, soul food, eating and chitlins, the, the and oh, my, No more champagne for him. <laughs> <laughs> he's a fake vegan. He's a motherfucking fake he's a, vegan. He's a fake everything. We know you, Cory Booker. We gonna call you out. When they introduce the pharmaceutical bill, he, he votes against that because the, his, the pharmaceutical lobby gives them. Oh, and they're all over New down. Jersey. Merck is there. Yeah, all so, the big pharmaceuticals I mean, are to there. To me, to be consistent in 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 your in in your true north, don't just say something that because he comes back and explains it. Well, I don't think they're going to do enough testing on it. Yeah. No, that's you're you're, you're a fraud. You're a fraud. Okay, okay. Let's hear what Burke is. I'm sorry, I'm ranting. Uh, I'm not even sure what we're talking about anymore, but you know what we should do? Is, is we should Drink more champagne, except Burke. He's underage. Okay, instead of live streaming or podcasting, we should just have a public access show at four in the morning. We should. That'd be awesome. We should. I think it should be at 3.30 just to be... 3.45. There we are. 3.15. <laughs> Um, Where is the restroom? Front, right by the front door. No, mom's trying to cut it off. We're going to overrule her. It's just that I have to. So, Laurel, let's talk about an issue. So, okay, so Reston, that's where um, Nabra, Nabra was us. Was a, was killed, and a lot of the police are saying it was road rage. Well, but, that's where she lived. She was killed in Sterling. Yeah. Okay, so she was killed in Sterling. Yeah. Where was she taken from? Like he jumped out with the baseball bat. Like where was Sterling. that? That so all that was in Sterling. Yeah. It's called Adams, and what does Adams, Adams stand for? Adams. Do you remember what it stands for? Yeah. Uh, no. Sorry, I forget. I never knew in the first place, actually. American something Muslim Center or something. So we don't think it was just a simple case of road rage. So tell us, Laura, what your thoughts are about it. You went to both the DuPont Circle and the rest of vigils? Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's hear your thoughts about what you think happened and what, happened? what this means for Reston. Yeah, it happened... Um near the mosque in the middle of the night. She was wearing hijab. Um, it, she wasn't even in a car. So for that to be road rage is really interesting. And I think if the police um, call that a hate crime, then they have to look at themselves more about what kind of hate crimes they're doing. Mm-hmm. So she, it looks like she was abducted and probably sexually assaulted and then dumped in one of those man-made lakes in a commercial park kind of place. Yeah. So what is this, do you think this means for Reston right now? What the, how is the community like overall reacting to it? The, the vigil at Lake Ann was beautiful. It was, there were about, I think there were at least a thousand people. Um, and the, um, the organizer from the Adams Center, I think he did a really good job. He was a young man, and um, he only let the young people talk. He didn't let any politicians talk. Oh, that's cool. I like that. It that's was cool. beautiful. Yeah, and that's it cool. Just, it was – each of the speakers just really spoke from the heart, and um, many of them knew her. It was just – and so they wanted to remember her and not how she was killed or – horrible stuff. They want to remember her beautiful spirit. Are people kind of like freaked out? Like they're, they don't want their kids walking on the streets right now? Or are they kind of, is there a weird thing towards the Hispanic community? Because it was a Hispanic guy who committed the crime? Or what do you think's going on in people's... I'm not sure. I, ha- I haven't heard. Probably Burke would know more about that because he goes to the her high school. Yeah. So. so yeah, Burke was attended her high school. So what do you think's going on, Burke, right now? 
what, what do you think in rest? Um, yeah. Well, it didn't take people long to uh, mess this up, and so of course uh, there are lots of stupid people who either make this a thing about how we should discriminate against immigrants now, hmm. or people who just like people who try and um, vicariously kind of add that wouldn't really be the correct word, but kind of insert themselves into the situation to say how they would have done it and blame the kids who are with her for running away or something. And there are a lot of tough guys who like to like comment on the Washington Post comment section and like fantasize about how we should kill the guy who did it or like what unconstitutional elaborate punishment we should devise and that Hmm. kind of misses the whole point but I think overall the community is um, sad about this and uh, I think it's definitely hit people at South Lakes hard and there were a lot of people who knew her and of course when anyone dies especially in a situation like this where it's involving high school there'll be some people at the school who try and act like they knew the person a lot better than they did but generally i think the reaction has been uh, genuine and i think uh I, i'm glad that at least people can kind of stick together more now but yeah people are sad about this definitely so yeah i think there's been an an so articulate an increase in uh, anti-muslim and anti-immigrant uh, hate crimes um, in the last few months. I, I think that's definitely there. Some people put that, lay that at Trump's feet. Um, I don't know. I think that hate and anger has always been there, but maybe people feel more emboldened, emboldened and empowered to carry out some acts right now. I don't know. But should we sign off or should we chat some more until we fall asleep? I think we're going to sign off. Let's, let's sign up. Okay. We all love you out there for joining us and peace.